I'd like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. As we come into Exodus chapter 4 today, we're going to see that uh, God continues to overcome Moses' objections as we move through these verse. And uh, Moses is going to come up with objections in the better part of this chapter, and then God is going to answer those. And the first problem he has is the problem of unbelief. It says in Exodus chapter 4 and in verse 1, And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. The Lord said unto him, What is that in thine hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand, and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand, and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand, that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath appeared unto thee. So as we come through these verses, um, we see here that God is dealing with all of these objections that Moses has. And really the objection that he has here in verse 1 is the objection of unbelief. And it says, And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. So he's, he's saying they're not going to believe me, but in essence it was God that had called Moses. So he was having some issues in believing God. And uh, friends, that is a sad scenario, but so often our lives are crippled by unbelief. Uh, and Moses here predicts the unbelief of Israel. And uh, unbelief is something that cripples us as the people of God. The Bible says in Romans 14, 23b, that whatsoever is not of faith is sin. In Hebrews eleven six, 6, it says, uh, but without faith it is impossible to please him. So we need to understand the importance of having faith uh, in our lives as a people of God and trusting God, believing what God says, and understanding that our God is a God that keeps his word. And Moses is, is really here predicting the unbelief of Israel, but in reality what Moses is doing is he is speaking from the viewpoint of unbelief in his own life. And he's accusing the nation of Israel of unbelief when really unbelief is his own problem. And uh, we're reminded as we come through this that uh, the Jews require a sign. Come to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And this is going to become significant in a minute. It says in 1 Corinthians 1 22, For the Jews require a sign. And the Greeks seek after wisdom. By the way, that's also an important verse to understand as you study through the book, the, the book of Acts. That the Jews require a sign. Now, with that in mind, come back to Exodus chapter four, and there is a sign that is revealed in verses two through four. It says, "And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thine hand?" And he said, "A rod." And he said, "Cast it on the ground." And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand, and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand, and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. So there are several things that we can learn from these verses, and we're going to move through them uh, in the time that we have left today. First of all, he says there, um, What is that in thine hand? And Moses says, A rod. Now when we stop and we think about this, you know, a rod is not much, is it? A rod is a dig stick. And, uh, of course, Moses had used that rod as a shepherd. Um, and the Bible talks about the, the symbol of the rod, and we'll look at that in just a moment. But Moses says, it's only a rod that's in my hand. It's a dig stick. Moses really didn't have much in his hand at all. And, you know, there are times when God will ask you and I the question, and, and that's a wonderful study through the Word of God, looking at what little people had in their hand. But what is, thy, what is that in thine hand? God will ask you that question, and you may feel like all you got is a stick. You don't have anything. But the truth of the matter is, when Moses took that rod and he surrendered it to God, it was amazing to see what God did with that rod, and it's interesting to study the rod of Moses as you go through the wilderness wanderings of the nation of Israel. Friend, you may not think that you have much, but if you take what you have and you surrender it to God, 
uh, you will see God do great and wonderful things with it. Can you imagine the lag that day? They had the five loaves and the two fishes, and he surrendered them to Jesus. And Jesus used those to feed the multitude. So what is the meaning of this sign? Well, this reminds us that God can use anything that he pleases, even a common shepherd's rod. Uh, the rod was a symbol of God's grace as a support in Psalm 23, the shepherd psalm. Uh, you lean upon it for support, and then uh, you see also here that it says he, he casts it down and it becomes a serpent, which is a type of Satan. Uh, the rod is a symbol of governmental authority and reign. Thus, it showed God's approval of Moses and ultimately of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, let me just give you a couple of verses that show the rod in that light. Psalm chapter 2. Psalm chapter 2 and verse 9. It says, Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. And then in Revelation chapter 2. And in verse 27, it says this. It says, But unto you I say, unto the resting fire tires, many as have not this doctrine, have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will give you none other burden. Sorry, verse 27. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. Of course, that's a quote from Psalm chapter 2 and verse 9. This rod also reminds us, and this picture reminds us, that only divine power can control Satan. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verse 26, it says, And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Friends, God is the only one that can bring deliverance over Satan. Egypt is a picture of the world. And Egypt cannot defeat God. The serpent was worshipped in Egypt and was an emblem of the goddess rhino. But friends, praise God, God is stronger. Now, it's interesting here. What is that in thine hand? It's a rod. You may not feel you have anything in your hand, but let me encourage you, give it to God, and God can do wonderful things with it. And then he says, cast it on the ground, and he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent, and Moses flagged from before it. Probably some of us would have flagged from before it as well if you had thrown it on the ground, and it became a snake. And this is interesting. The Lord said unto Moses, put forth thine hand, and take it by the tail, and he put forth his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. Now, for anybody that knows anything about snakes, and, and some of you listening would not be able to, would not even be interested in picking up snakes, period, but... For those who know anything about snakes, for those who are snake handles, it, handlers, they will say, if you're going to pick up a snake, you do not pick up a snake by the tail. You pick it up from right directly behind its head so that it's unable to sting you um, with its stinger. Uh, you know, when you grab that thing by the tail, then the whole rest of the snake uh, is there and he can swing up around with his mouth and he can sting you. But this is just the show that Moses' faith was not in God, it was not to be in human logic, but rather it was to be in God. And when God says, take it by the tail, God means take it by the tail. So taking it by the tail is exactly what Moses does. And as he catches it, it becomes a rod in his hand once again. And then we see the purpose of all of that in verse 5. He says, that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob hath appeared unto thee. So the purpose of the whole thing is that the nation of Israel would believe. And the reason why they would believe was through this sign. We're going to see that over and over again as you move through the word of God. The Jews require a sign. And uh, friends, the on, contrary to what the world would say, seeing is not believing. If you see something, why do you have to have faith to believe it? Um, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And may we have the faith to believe God. And it's sad that sometimes God has to give signs so that we would believe him. But the truth of the matter is, we should just simply believe his word. God said it, that settles it. Let's be a people that believe God. Have a great day.